And now, from Doug TV International. And this is Too Real. Hi everyone, here we are tonight, and uh, Edgar's up in New York, and I am here in Philadelphia, and um, I guess Edgar's going to kick us off tonight. Well, I'm going to do a little bit of reminiscing. So, uh, one of the things that I've been thinking about, looking back on, okay, reflecting back on my life is um, a lot of people's fondest memories about um, um, uh, what they went through fall into childhood. They, their, their childhood memories are really um, sort of a special time in their lives. But I know for me and a lot of other people, being at the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts, being in art school was just such um, such an amazing time. Um, it was the first time that I was really surrounded by like-minded, uh, like-minded people, everyone pursuing this crazy dream, everybody talking about and creating art all day long. It's all you did. And yeah. going to the museums, um, for me, I hadn't even seen the ocean till I was 18. So Really? Yeah. Wow. So, you know, Philadelphia is a big city, you know, uh, certainly way bigger than Omaha. Oh, right? well, yeah. I mean, shit, my hometown of 5,000. <laughs> and, and you know, it's a big city with a fantastic art museums, the Rodin Museum, the Philadelphia Museum, the Barnes Collection. And, um, uh, but the most important part of art school to me was the... Uh, uh, the, all the teachers and the students, and uh, it, it, it really, um, people say it's not an important part of being an artist, and I think it's invaluable, really. Mm -hmm. uh, you can train maybe with different people one-on-one -on -one and, and do some different training, but nothing can replace the camaraderie, and also the competition. When you're in a room full of people and you're all drawing the same figure, everyone's looking at everyone else's drawings, and you're working at a, 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 an extremely high level. You're competing with the other students in the room. You're competing with yourself, and if you're in the proper, uh, if you're getting the proper training, you're working from life, from the figure. Yeah. Yeah, um, absolutely, and uh, you know, the shows were amazing when we were, well, I went to the show last night, did anybody out there go to the show? It was, uh, it was good, I thought it was better this year than last year. Uh, there was certainly more figurative, uh, considerably more figurative work this year. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was nice to see, and um, so I, um, there were a couple, there was uh, one, I won't name any names or anything, but there was one person who, if it's his, his or her junior year, he or she will be unbelievable next year, I think. I mean, re had the whole spatial thing down, and um, they were a bit cluttered, a bit... Um, compositions weren't brilliant, but he, he or she was trying uh, a lot of different things, a lot of different... Uh, you know, it's exactly what it should have been in art school, I thought. Well, that's what art school's about. Yeah, it wasn't about finding a style. And that's what a lot of people were doing, which I, that, which is too bad. I kind of disparage that, you know. Um, because well, if you have something to say, you're going to have a style. You know, it's, a tricky, it's a tricky thing. Um, and, and that would be maybe one of the negatives about art school, where if a student arrives... Mm -hmm too quickly with a style or a particular way of working, it's very rewarded. If you have a consistency in your work, yeah, um, it's rewarded, but art school should be, uh, clearly should be more of an exploration and there should be lots more failures uh, yeah. 
<laughs> than anything, and it should be um, uh, about ambition and pushing further than you your um, technical abilities. Right. And yeah, I, I very much agree. Um, uh, and and it just what there wasn't the uh, I was really happy to see there were there was not a lot of, there were not a lot of knitted goods, <laughs> you know. And, um, you know, balls of yarn and that kind of thing this year. So um, I, I, I thought it was good. It was a really great turnout. What, what, I, what I missed, uh, there was not a lot of faculty there, which I found unusual and not, not great. I, I think the faculty should really, you know, if you want my opinion. Um, <laughs> I, I would agree with you. Yeah, I didn't see any faculty that I knew, which I thought was uh, really unfortunate. You know, because you and I know a lot of faculty. There. Well, I, see, I've been, I, I, I haven't been teaching that long. I've been teaching for nine years, uh -huh. uh, not full time. I'm, I'm just adjunct. But um, it, the, the, the student work really ebbs and flows. And, and some years you get um, a lot of, say, figurative work, a lot of a certain type of work, and then other years, um, it, it just shifts and changes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, um, I, I know that there's a, a, a communication between the students that is happening. You feel it. You feel this whole world, and, and you don't know it, because as an instructor, you come in, you're working with, uh, you know, 10 to 15 students, and... Uh -huh. They all know each other's work. They all critique each other's work. Um, one of my bits of advice to students is to um, to get to know each other and, and to establish as many friendships as you can because when you leave school, you're, that's your community. That That's the world. Everyone uh, may or may not be painting in 10 years, but they maybe they become art critics or galleryists or or, or other things and uh, i know that that most of my friends are the friends uh that i have from art school yeah yes yeah well that was true for me um I, but you know you and i have become friends and uh, like you know in recent years and that's been nice uh, well that's also yeah that's a, that's a an important role of an art school uh, I, I, one of the things about being uh, an artist, and I dare say, you know, a realist or a figurative artist, where the work is very demanding in terms of the hours put in. Yeah. One thing about being an artist is that it's very, it's kind of a lonely existence. Mm -hmm. You're you're in the studio alone. You're usually working alone. Uh, for thirty years, I just created my work. I know you did too. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't, um, you, you, in one way, you don't have the time to go out and find a community. And, and there is no community of people sitting around in their studios alone. So the community that you establish in art school carries through. And there is something wonderful about seeing someone's work. And then I look, oh, they went to the Pennsylvania Academy. And, and you have a... A, a somewhat shared experience because some of the teachers overlap. Yeah. The school building, a lot of the building is the same, and uh, or parts of the building. The museum, of course, is the same. Yeah. And I know that when when I began teaching, um, I'm like I say, I'm just adjunct. I get a class. It, it was the the wonderful thing about it was that being back into another, back into this community of a whole bunch of people pursuing this impossible dream. It's a tough career. One of the most difficult. Yeah, I, I, I don't wish it on anyone. I certainly didn't wish it on my kids. And one yeah, of them did become yeah I, I, I wouldn't say the way I just, you know, I, I let people, I would, I would let people pursue what they want, but um, the, um, just to be able to discuss the old masters and and, and uh, be able to discuss art uh, in in that community is really a wonderful thing. Yeah. 
and everyone gets it. Yeah. Everyone, everyone understands what you're talking about. Absolutely. Um, and um, our, our, our class, you know, our years there, starting with kind of your class and moving into mine, we really had a self-propelled group of incredibly strong painters. And, you know, I was thinking last night when I was looking at the show, I was asking myself, why isn't there all that, uh, you know, conceptual stuff this year and, you know, multimedia stuff, sound and all that. There was some of it, but not really not nearly as much. And I thought that class probably moved itself in that direction to some extent. And I imagine that the new people coming in are, are more, more, uh, are leaning more toward figurative work, and hopefully that'll, set, you know, hopefully the the people there now will be able to set a trend, and and not to not to leave the show on a negative note. I want to say that almost everybody who was working figuratively had something good and solid in their work. You know, there was a bit of joy and that I got in, in in all of it. Maybe not, but you know, there was there was almost always one piece that showed. Some, some real, uh, some just some good solid painting and, and some good drawing. And I, I, that was really encouraging, so. Well, it's it's great to just see painting being done. Yeah, yeah. The, the you know, if you go to the Whitney Biennial or you move into most of these contemporary shows, uh, just painting all together, including abstraction, um, painting is is uh, seen as second rate, uh, yeah. as not important um, object. It's turned into um, this bizarre uh, world of ready mades and installations. Well, I, I want to talk about that for a minute, if you don't mind. I don't mind, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I was, um, you know, I was thinking that. Um, when, when, especially when, when the neo-modernists say, you know, why bother drawing when you can take a photograph of it? And it occurred to me that these people don't, have not spent, have probably not spent any time looking at paintings if they don't understand the difference between looking at a painting and uh, looking at a photograph. Now, now, I love photography and I love photographs, but... When I, when I have a nice, you know, a good painting that I really like in front of me and that means something to me, you know, when I go to Washington and I look at the Rembrandts or the Vermeers or the Monets or whatever, every time I go I see something different in them. And, and that rarely, rarely happens to me with a photograph. You know, paintings are more like a living entity, I think. And, I, um, well, it, it, it's the world filtered through someone's brain, whereas... Photography, I know that um, it, it's its own art form. They're very separate. Yeah, and, but, but even with your buddy Milton Avery, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have a more complex surface. You know, it's just going to be, it's going to be something that, that you know a person made, and it's going to have a physical action embedded in it in some way. It's going to be the narrative of process. No, <laughs> <laughs> that too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but there, I, there, I, there is, gonna, you know, it's always going to be a more complicated surface. There's always going to be more to look at than there is in a photograph, just because a photograph is a purely mechanical hand. And the, to me, the miracle of photography is that people can get their own personal imprint on something that is so mechanical. But we'll talk about that another time. But with a painting, that's, you know, to... to to embed yourself in the, in the work is is easy. I think. Well, or it's it happens in painting. I don't think it really happens in photography, in, in the same and certainly not in the same way. So these, I someone who says you know, painting is irrelevant, drawing is irrelevant. I, I did that post this week. Martin Lang, the guy who wrote the uh, article about um, draw, teaching drawing being bad for students. Um, he didn't, uh, I, he just had, I, I finally figured out that he has no use for it. He just, he doesn't like it, you know. He's never spent any time either looking at it or doing it. Um, the only way you can say that is that if it means nothing to you, I think. 
you know, to, to completely disregard it like that. So it occurred to me, and, and this we'll call this the speculation episode, I guess, but, um, you know, it occurred to me that uh, these are people who don't have anything to do, either viscerally, internally, emotionally, with what art has been, and it still is to most people, to what art has been until, you know, really neo-modernism started, I guess, when uh, uh, Greenberg decided to prescribe the absence of any painterly quality to a painting, you know, where he, he not only wanted to get rid of um, content, but then, uh, you know, uh, 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 paint itself well, was the next thing to bite the dust. Anything human, uh, even yeah. how someone painted, he wanted to eliminate the artist's hand. Yeah, and, and right. And, and, and you end up with nothing. No, no, you do end up with, well, you end up with a, with a minimalist painting. And it also occurred to me, um, you know, what is it, what, what, I think I mentioned this in the post, when you're looking at a minimalist painting, I've always been, I've always misunderstood, I think, because I was always looking for a visually satisfying experience. And I don't think any was ever intended in conceptual work or in minimalist work. Um, so I've been, you know, and I look at it and I think, how is that in any way like a, a uh, uh, um, the visual art? A, 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 a Rembrandt painting or a, or a Monet or a Gauguin or anything, you know, anything, a de Kooning or a, or a Rauschenberg, you know, well, it isn't, it, it isn't. Those early modernists lived in the visual world, you know, they, they were all about making something that you could step back and look at, even though they were often very repetitive and often very dull, um, and or very graphic. You got you got like in a Franz Klein, you get you get all the impact you're ever gonna get in the first look and it and it can be kind of explosive and amazing, but you know, there's nothing really to go back to. Um, but but it was all visually based, I think. Uh, but but once Frank Stella uh, and and Donald Judd took the helm, there was really nothing to look at. And and I think that was the point, you know. Um, it, it's all cerebral. It's, uh, you know, which is what art was to Marcel Duchamp. It was, um, you know, he was about finding an interior art. He was not interested at later, later on in, in visual art. I still think he was influenced by it, which is interesting. Um, I don't think he could have helped but be because he was trained as a visual artist. And you saw those photographs this week. He was a, he was a competent painter. I don't yeah, think he was a great his work painter. was pretty good. Yeah. You know. I always like the new Descending the Staircase. I think that's an excellent painting. Yeah, and um, that he decided to abandon it is another issue, maybe. Well, he, wasn't, he said he wasn't cut out for it. And, um, but he could do it, and he was, whether he liked it or not, that was his leading. I saw a ready-made by him of a, a wine bottle and a glass case or something. And I wanted to pick it up, you know. I mean, now it's an antique, obviously. But, um, you know, he was, uh, I don't know if people out there know, but his toilet was, uh, the urinal was over a hundred years ago now. Um, well, and the ones that you see are all copies, actually. Yeah. Interestingly enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but, but just to finish that thought, um, uh, yeah, so I think Duchamp, even, if, you know, in his work, I was looking at The Bride last night, what's the... Uh, and uh, even that, it looks kind of like a Calder. It look, it's something to look at, you know. Even in even as in his, you know, kind of what I consider to be more or less dreadful work, it's still visually oriented, and that's something that has really ceased to exist altogether. Well, what what happened? One of the things that that the art world has and, and, and the, the people working, um, the postmodernists or whatever, uh, they have rhetoric and they have words. And what they do is they, when they critique and when they work with um, students or in, in these... Uh, Edgar, I'll be right back. You go on. But in, in, when they work with students in these programs where they're not teaching them how to draw and how to paint, but they're basically shifting their thinking and, and teaching them conceptual art. It's, it's this 
it's this world of rhetoric, this world of, of words, and they can sit and name 20 artists and say, oh, your work falls within the context of, you, you fall in between this artist and, and that artist, and, and um, you should look at these five artists. And I, I sit and I watch that, and I go, well, all 20 of the artists they're talking about suck. So it, it, it's, it's, they're not talking about Tish, and they're not talking about Aang, they're not talking about like great or, or, or Otto Dix or, or um, uh, you know, Edward Monk or expressionist work. The, they're talking about the, each of these artists, their work is really horrible. And, and, and they, they have all this word, these words around it and all this support. Oh, Joseph Boyce put a, a piece of marble on the ground and then, you know, um, uh, the murderous uh, Carl Andre uh, then changed it to a row of bricks. Okay. And to me, both of them are, are crap. I, I mean, I, there's nothing for me there. I walk into a room and there's a row of bricks on the floor or some pieces of lead does nothing for me. And, and uh, so, so they go, what happens is, um, as opposed to a figurative art school or a school that's based on learning how to draw and, and paint and learning some real skills, mm -hmm. they learn the rhetoric and they learn to talk about the work. And in a way, you know, the work can be anything. You know, they could take a piece of paper, put it on the floor, and, and build a, a, a whole explanation, write a thesis, uh, make a video of their friends dancing around it, um, and, and, and graduate with that little piece of paper. And I'm not kidding. Uh, you know, that's the whole thing. And yeah. then they finish art school, and um, they've learned nothing. Yeah. Except how to talk about art. Right. They've learned how to, well, they've learned how to talk about a certain type of art. They've essentially been taught to ignore what you and I consider art. They've been taught that it's of no consequence. And uh, I, I, does anybody, I mean, I don't know how people can see that. It's discarding, it's absolutely discarding um, the history of art. And so I don't know how even any of Greenberg's continuum is left because it doesn't, it doesn't pay homage to, uh, Anything but itself. It's 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 entirely self-reflective, and in that sense, entirely narcissistic. Well, it, it yes, it, it's self-indulgent, and and it becomes art about art. It's not art about life. It's not art about um, what we feel. You know, emotions are, are had to be eliminated, and and sentimentality, and, and anything that that is human. Well, I don't, I don't even mind art about art. If you look at uh, certain, you know, contemporary narrative painters, they're, they're making art about art, but it's, it, 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 you know, it embraces the whole history of art. It doesn't, and it's painting too, or drawing. It's not, it's not merely, you know, finding an old bowling pin in the garbage and, and saying that it represents something that, you know, they don't refer to anything that I've ever seen previous to Marcel Duchamp, and uh, and really he was irrelevant until, I don't know when. I mean, he, he did his thing, and people always talked about him, and the new descending, but it was his figurative work that was really famous when we were in school. It wasn't the ready-made, it was the new descending the staircase. Well, I, I think we're, how we ended up where we are now in the art world was that combination of um, progress, quote unquote, and uh, originality. So once once they took painting and drove it into the wall with uh, minimalism, yeah. and, and you end up with uh, no brushwork, uh, very thin paint, uh, flat fields of color. Yeah, uh, you know, maybe a shaped canvas that uh, that becomes original. And, and um, you know, painters were getting sick of it. Um, I, I found out recently that, that uh, Demon Corn and uh, Parks and all those guys, they moved out to San Francisco to get away from Greenberg. They were sick of his prescriptions. You know, he was like, you can't paint the figure, you can't take, do this and that. 
he said that to de Kooning too, and de Kooning had the, a major clash with him, and Devin Korn and the rest of them just decided to get the hell out of town, you know, like, we don't want any part of that. We love abstract painting, but we also love drawing and painting the figure, and, uh, you know, just... Well, there, that was, that part of that is, again, originality and progress, the idea that, okay, now you've made uh, kind of loose abstraction, now we have to kind of make... You take that away, uh, no one's done that, and then take that away, no one's done that. It, and it's an elimination. Each thing, each process, each move forward, quote unquote, yeah. um, removes something. And, and, and by then, the time and, it and you end up with literally nothing. Yeah, literally nothing. Uh, in fact, there have been several. In fact, well, there have been a lot of shows of empty rooms. But um, there's some famous ones. <laughs> you know. And it's just stupid. I, the, the, one of the winners at the of the um, what what's the the Turner Prize? It was a room that where the light turns on and turns off every five seconds. That's wow. it. Wow. And it doesn't get stupider than that to me. I mean, that has nothing to do with anything. No, no. It okay. says everything about all of life, uh, Edgar. You missed. Um, well, it, it, it is. It, I mean, it, it can also, say whatever you want it to say. Well, it, it looks. It's like no one's done that, you know. Oh, no one's done that. No one's. Um, yeah, um, I've never uh, seen a flicker light on the stage in a theater piece of you. <laughs> well, uh, of course, you could take anything. Any, any see, a, a great artist isn't afraid of. Um, they're not afraid of art history. They're competing with it. They're incorporating it. Yeah. Um, yeah. They didn't. They didn't feel uh, the need to destroy the art of the past. Absolutely not. They revere. I mean, I, I thank God there's art of the past. But you know, the the past for these people is, is for neo modernists is is not very deep. You know, no. it's a, it's, you can't even go waiting in it. Really. I mean, and the movements have happened. So you know, postmodernism was over before I could blink. Um, and, and it had moved on to post postmodernism and, and uh, you know, the Baroque period, it had, people lived in it, you know? The stuff that happens now, there's no time for people to, to even see whether it, 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 it's uh, even interesting, you know? Some critic well, will come to a show and call it relationalism, and then relationalism is born, but it's, it doesn't have much potential because... You know, it's just more ready-mades and whatever. Only now yeah, they nobody, have a... No, nobody really likes this stuff. That, that's one problem. And, and Even the uh, people who defend it, I cannot get anyone to stick up, except Joe did the, the two clocks. But other than that, I can't get anyone to defend a single piece, an actual piece. They'll defend it as a whole world that I'm missing, but... Um, uh, and ironically, well, they can't break down why they like it. You know. Well, they can't. They can't show me a piece, any single piece that they've been moved by. Oh, I know. Yeah. I know. When I when I began like my critiques on the art world, I put a post. I I, I I can't stand minimalism, which I can't stand, and I don't like any of it. And people just they object to the idea. How on earth could you? dismiss an entire movement in art. Like, well, you know what? I'm an artist. Each artist makes decisions. You know, I empty uh, my ashtrays every once in a while, too. Well, and these people may... may <laughs> yeah. be, I'm they, just saying, how can you dismiss what? What's there to dismiss? It's like dumping out a, 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 a tray of ashes. I mean, it's... Uh, it's not, um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a one-man, one it's a one-off. It's a one-man band. It's how many people can paint a uh, white painting? I bet you they even buy their their, their blanks at uh, a Blick now, you know? I bet you they're not even making them themselves or putting the white lead on them so that there's, there probably is no uh, narrative of process, even that, which was a fairy tale to begin with, but... And who cares? I, like yeah. you said, it's like, you know, Robert Ryman painting one white painting after another. Oh, oh, but Edgar, you forget he drew a line every once in a while. Ryman? Uh, yeah, he did. Oh. There, there are, there's even, like, more than one line in some of them. 
That's Barnett Newman. No, 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 Ryman, Ryman. They're oh, pencil Ryman. lines, and they, they may be paint. I don't know. You know. I've got to rethink this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Um, so, so it's like emptying an ashtray to me. I mean, it's like okay, minimalism. I, I'm, the, <laughs> yeah. One thing, one, one of uh, one artist that out of all the modernists that. Um, just stands above uh, most of them is de Kooning, William de Kooning. And de Kooning had a great um, appreciation for all of art. All well, artists. he was a real drawing Nazi, too. He thought that he could draw, he, he could paint. I mean, his paintings are, are, are visually, they're visual, they're, they're beautiful. I mean, they're, or they're rough, or they're, or they're angry, or they're. Yeah you, get, yeah. you get. Yeah, he was the abstract expressionist, I think. You get a lot from them. I mean, I stop and I have to look at them. Yeah. I won't walk by a Dakuti. And one thing that Dakuti talked about, he said, when, with with art and, and as an artist, he, he he said all of our history is like a, a a stew, and you dip your ladle in and you pull out what you need. Mm -hmm. You know, you dip your ladle. So he didn't have he didn't sit and and have to trash the old masters and. And uh, yeah. um, uh, make you know he didn't sit and wring his hands and say I'm done with the figure. Well, Ra Rauschenberg li liked my, my work, you know. I mean, he was open to all kinds of stuff. Sure, sure, and and um, I know that with the and you know even that John Cage loved music, you know. Oh sure, yeah. sure. I, I think that and and he. Made music. I mean, and, and modernist composers play Bach, you know. It's not, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm very happy that this hasn't equally, uh, you know, inflicted all of the arts. But nothing's as bad as the visual, or what happened in the museums. <laughs> no. I, I, or, or in art schools. I, I don't know. I don't know music schools. I do know ballet schools. I do know... Say if you take a discipline like writing or acting, um, actors don't they, they they learn techniques they learn real things. Writers learn how to construct a, a story, how to how to put together words. Um, nobody's going to read your book if you, if it's a bunch of gibberish. No, and if you show up at a music school and during your interview you have, you tell them that you have you not only have no interest in learning to play an instrument. <laughs> You don't want to learn how to read music, you know. <laughs> and then, and then you're proud of it, and you go, "People that do want to learn." Yeah, and you start telling everybody that that's real music. Yeah. Yeah. Now, anyone who wants to play, a, learn how to play an instrument's an asshole. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. And instruments are, are irrelevant, you know, because they just are. We, we well, listen that, to our music through speakers now. Regrettably, <laughs> every. Those people that walk that are re rejects from the um, music schools, they're in the art museums, you know. So they like it, John had a video about Carnegie Mellon's. Um, they they have this show, great history. I think it's biennial or triennial, and they go all the way back to the impressionists, mm -hmm. and um, they they gather what they consider the great great art being made, mostly America, but they they take some art from all over the world. Yeah. And the last show, all installations, uh, conceptual art, uh, if they have painting, it was this uh, shrill kind of political stuff, visually ho horrible. Yeah. And um, the, of, of course, the, 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 gr the greatest piece was sound art, and, and it was a little tape recorder somewhere in, in Kind of in the corner. I don't know if they're proud of it, but um, it played uh, recordings of the forest. You know? well, well, we're doing sound art right now. <laughs> you ought to see this setup. It's kind of sorry we were late, everybody. By the way, we were. I was having for some reason I I couldn't pick up his microphone. Hey, no apologies. Tonight, but, uh, we 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 made it happen anyway. So, but it's uh, it's pretty primitive tonight. Um, anyway. But uh, yeah, you know, um, and and these people have somehow managed to make that, you know, no, don't want to read music, don't want to play an instrument. We're just going to sit around and talk about non-music. Um, <laughs> I, I somehow that that has happened in the visual art world, 
And um, well, I watch in, in critiques. I watch people that they just they go. I have no use for the figure. You know? Yeah. None. And and a lot of these people have no use for painting. You know, it, it, it's done. Uh, right. Painting. And 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 then those are people. And this is what I was saying earlier. Those are people who are not interested in art as we know it. And and it's uncanny that there are there are schools full of non artists now. You know, the, that are well, well, the oddest thing to me, Doug, is these people are real. Most of that that kind of thinking is the major thinking in the art world. I know, I know, and it's just it's absolutely mind bending. That it, that it got and to be and that. Um, well, you know, and, and, and and I want to reiterate, you know, that people think a camera can do what a person can do with a drawing or with a painting is is so far off. These are people, I'm sure of it, and I, I'm going to look into it, and I'm going to try to interview some people, but I'm sure of it that these are people who, who just, painting doesn't, in, the visual arts do not interest them. You know, they've never looked at it. So how can they even refer to the history of art without, with, by, when, they're, when they're not interested in what it contains? You know, it's like being an archaeologist and, and, only being interested in digging up cigarette butts or something. Yeah, the last 10 years. Yeah, uh, and, and that's all they know. They don't, from what I've seen, and, and when I talk to, to students who are, you know, consider themselves conceptualists and whatnot, they, they, don't, uh, they don't go very far back. You know, they don't, no. they don't know what you and I just picked up in art school, you know. I mean, I've done a lot of reading, too, and... Um, uh, <clears throat> but um, yeah, they don't. You know, if you if you ask them who, um, oh, I don't know, uh, some. Uh, if you ask them who, oh, Corot. Corot, give me a huh, Corot. Yeah, who is Corot? They might not know that. And and he's one of our landscape. Well, he's one of my landscape heroes. His early work, not so much his later stuff, but. His figures are a little fine. Uh, yeah. Love but, uh, um, no, I know, it's a real shame. Or who was Thomas Cole, or who was, uh, you know, who was uh, uh, Frederick Edwin French. I bet you that most of those people don't know that. And he lived just up the street from them, basically. You know, if they're in New York, you know, he lived right up on the Hudson River. And they, you know, they probably run by his stuff in the museum and go, ugh, you know, um, well, uh, one, uh, one academic crap or something. One issue um, that that becomes a, a problem, even with um, it, it's this lack of depth and lack of knowledge from the teachers, and even with teachers that consider themselves uh, figurative, um, their lack of kind of knowledge of. of what the old masters did and how to turn form and, and, and how to work a contour. Um, there's, there's just been an old, such an overall decline in skills. And so you got, you got uh, all these teachers who kind of self-learned maybe figurative work and, and then they're teaching students. And I see so many problems. Um, and um, that comes back to one of the things that both you and I are, are big believers in is uh, you, when you begin, when you're at art school, you've got to do the fundamentals. And the fundamentals are learning to draw, paint, and sculpt from the figure, with the figure, from life, period. Yeah. And, and um, that's where you're going to get, you're going to learn everything. And, well, most everything. And then the other thing is to look at the old masters. Look yeah. at how they created volume. Look at how they created form. And if you're sculpting, look at look at other, uh, sculpt, other sculptors of the figure and what they did with the figure. Um, yeah. Those things are, are, are critical yeah, in terms of art awesome. training. Yeah. Um, let's see, I was just looking at um, uh, something that I wrote a while, a while back. And... Um, uh, um, I you know I, I keep uh, I keep coming back to Duchamp because he's a, he's such a hero of the of the uh, new academic world and it occurred to me also that these these are also people 
Well, you know, he's a perfect role model because he didn't want to paint. He gave it up. He said he wasn't cut out for it. Um, he liked, if anything, to talk about it. And they like to hang around. And he, and, and um, you know, so if you're basically a talentless young person or, or a person who just doesn't want to uh, be ambitious in, in the way that you have to be to be a figurative painter, um, you know, then, uh, you know, you can sit around and talk about it. You can, uh, you, and you can look at him and say, he didn't paint, he didn't do much, and he, he was okay. Look at how, you know. And, and so he's kind of a perfect role model for the, for the contemporary artist because really all he did was talk, you know? He was a talking head more than he was a, an, an active artist. And, and, and we've discussed this before, that he believed that the perfect work of art would, would live in your head. And I wanted to see how he put it here. Um, that would, uh, yeah, he, wa he believed that the perfect work of art would entirely dissolve the personality of the person who made it. That was his idea of a perfect work of art. And that's what these things are. I don't know why people say they're something else, because that, that's what uh, Duchamp thought they should be. You know, he, he believed that the only real art exists in your mind and uh, is, 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 in essence, not only non-visual, but, but non-perceivable by anybody that you saw. So, um, you and know. It's not, it's not anything that I care about or I'm interested in. No, no. But it needs to be cold. Very cold. So, what's our time, Doug? Yeah, we've been, uh, I think we've, we're at about 45 minutes, so. Um, oh, man, way longer than we should be. I think, I, I, and I do apologize again that we got off to a late start. I've even been you know, practicing and trying to get this stuff up working. I hope there's no echo tonight. I don't think there is. Um, I can't hear one in the headphones. Well, so. we're just getting started. Yeah. Once we get all the, we're going to get all the technical glitches out. And, um, and we're going to start having interviews with people. And listen, I want to say, oh, another thing. Um, I talked with David uh, Brigham at the Academy the other day, and he's uh, supporting me in writing a book about the Academy. I want to do a big um, story, you know, I want to do as many interviews as I can and get as many stories from people who are still around like Dan Miller and Ed Siegel, who was, uh, you know, who had uh, uh, Daniel Garber as one of his teachers, and then people from our class, and, and then the class before, Bruce Samuelson, Arthur DaCosta, that group. Well, I... I the, what, what, what Doug's bringing up, um, the Pennsylvania Academy, of the fine arts is the oldest, longest running art school in the world. Yeah. Uh, continually running. And it does not have um, a, a beautiful- Popular book about it. A beautiful, like uh, a book about the school and it's got this incredible history uh, up still right now to students that are working now. David and, told me that 200 books were written last year using their uh, archive. I mean, and something we both said almost simultaneously was that you cannot talk about art in America without talking about the academy. And 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 also, just as a uh, the New York Academy put together a, a great book, The Figure, yeah. and it's just a great. It, it's it's a uh, a testament to the school. It's an advertisement in effect, for, for recruiting new students. And they, they can look through and see. Um, and I tell students to do this all the time. If you're looking at an art school, look at the teacher's work. Look, actually, look at their work. Yeah. See what they're doing. Look at uh, a graduate student work. Yeah, um, and it's really been interesting. There are a lot of things I didn't know. The Academy, Peel actually got going before the revolution in, in like uh, 1771, starting to create, you know, the the charter for the school and get get funding and uh, Ben Franklin very much admired him and uh, and I think that's the connection between the Academy and Penn you know why basically if you get into the Academy you can go to Penn because Peel and uh, Jefferson also was involved uh, you know they were all buddies I think it goes well, back that far if there's anyone out there that 
wants to tell stories, has some great information about the Academy, reach out to Doug. Yeah, please and, do. And, and Doug's compiling, he's, he, he's beginning this, he's already begun this yeah. project. Yeah, and, um, and if anybody wants to really help me do research, that's where I really need the help. Um, if somebody could spend one or two days a week with me, you know, not just, uh, preferably here in Philadelphia, so we can get together and look at books together and, um, you know, actually make it happen in some kind of efficient way. That would be, I would be eternally grateful for some time. Now, I'm, and uh, I'm going to be trying to get some, I'm going to put together, I am putting together a couple of sample chapters and photographs and, you know, I'm already in the process of, uh, arranging some interviews and that kind of thing. So there may be funding. And okay, so we better wrap up here. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, I'm Doug Farron. <clears throat> and I'm Edgar Jarens. And this is... Too... Real. <laughs> and uh, copyright everything, Doug and Edgar, and music me. Well, there is no music tonight, sorry. Well, there will be when I post this later. So I did All the right. music, goddammit. <laughs> and we will see you soon. Yeah, see you soon. And thank you for coming to, to watch and listen. See you next week, I hope. Bye. Bye-bye. Give me a call, Edgar. This has been a production of Doug TV International.